Today we are going to work with the element of our texture and what you're looking at is an example of material studies or texture studies that artists use. This is a pretty common upper level exercise. You're going to be doing a bit of it today where you take a simple form like a sphere and then you turn it into different types of textures, different things. So what is texture? Texture is the way something feels or appears to feel. There's actual, acquired, and visual. It relies on your sense of touch, the nervous system. And your nervous system is your brain and all of the nerves in your body. And that determines a few things with you. It determines your sensations, your movement, and your balance. Sensation is the feelings that you get, whether it's a strong feeling like pain or whether it's something like being cold or the sensation of the wind on your skin or the way fabric feels on your skin. Movement, nerves control our movement. They send electrical impulses to our muscles and that's what makes us able to draw and write and kick a ball and walk and all those things. And then balance. Um, your brain and your nerves coordinate so that you don't topple over. They locate you in space so that you automatically, your body knows where it is and can adjust itself so that you don't fall down. And also so that you can do things like reach over and grab an object, pick it up, things of that nature. So sensation is your sense of touch as applied to intangible things, temperature, airflow, and sounds. ASMR is autonomous sensory meridian response. It's sounds that make you feel good. And I will link some of those on Classroom that you can listen to. Actual texture itself is how something feels when you touch it. In this case, this is uh, artwork by Merritt Oppenheimer. It is a teacup that is covered with rabbit fur. So it's unexpected and therefore interesting because teacups and plates, dishes are usually smooth, made out of china of some sort or glass and in this or plastic. And in this case, it's covered with fur. So imagine that sensation of drinking tea or whatever out of a cup that's covered in fur what would that feel like acquired texture is when you use an actual texture to create a visual texture and frottage is drawing technique using all acquired textures so this is an example of frottage and you're going to experiment with how to get acquired textures so your first exercise for today is acquired texture so you're going to need a crayon or a pencil, blank paper, either loose or in your sketchbook. And all you do is put your paper on top of a surface and rub the paper with the crayon or the pencil. And you get a required texture because it lifts up the texture. If you are here at school face to face, use either provided textures, if I have them on your desk, or items around you. Think about things like your cell phone, your backpack, the bottom of your shoes, the wood on your desk, underneath your desk, your chair. At home, you can use anything at all that leaves an impression. And a lot of people on the right, what you see is an image of them using and collecting acquired textures from gravestones. This is gravestone rubbing. You take a thin sheet of paper and as you go over it, it will pick up the name or engravings or pictures or other things. Visual texture is when you use line and direction and pattern to create the appearance of texture, such as in the close up of Einstein's face over here. And this is a pencil drawing. You can see how they created the texture of his mustache. And it's kind of bristly, as are his eyebrows, but then his hair is still kind of wavy and coarse, but it is smoother than those bristly parts. And then you have the wrinkles in his forehead and around his eyes, the crow's feet under the eyes, a different type of wrinkle that happens, the texture of the skin, 
all of that just done with line and direction. So your next exercise is with visual texture, you're going to duplicate this chart. Um, craftsmanship is very important. You can just divide your paper up into 12 sections or you can draw 12 squares to fill in. And it's larger on the next si side for looking at it. Be neat and pay attention to direction because they create different things. And as you work, you can kind of see the different effects that they create, whether it is something like thatch or some sort of fur, curled, scales, stones. Um, they call this parquet, but weaving, wood planks, interwoven, different type of weaving, all of those things can go in your toolkit to use when you're trying to draw something. And there it is larger. And then for your third exercise, you're stepping up some. So you are copying the texture spheres. You want to make them about the size of a quarter. So if you have a quarter trace set or a bottle cap or anything that's round, you can free draw your circle as well. And use just line, direction, and value shading to make these three textures. You have a one that is metallic and fairly smooth. It has some creases on it. This is one of those aluminum foil balls that people were making um, the other year if you've ever not made one of those they are kind of a good i don't know way to keep occupied if you're bored and like watching tv or something uh you can look it up on the internet this is a marble sphere and you have a very distinct pattern of black white gray and there's some green in it and you want to capture not just that pattern but also that texture and then a much rougher texture of the cobblestone. And then you're going to turn in for today your acquired textures, your texture grid, and your spheres. That's it.